Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the meeting of the Mayor and Council of Princeton, New Jersey. It is March 24th. Recording in progress. 2024. Uh, welcome to our meeting. Could we start with the meeting statement, please? Adequate notice of this meeting was provided in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act, including the time, date, and location of the meeting. In addition, the agenda and all related materials were posted electronically and made available to the public on Princeton's meeting portal in advance of the meeting. Thank you. Layton's gonna do the land acknowledgement. Thank you, Mayor. We gather today on the land of the Lenny Lenape. As members of the Princeton community, we aspire to show appreciation, respect, and concern for all peoples and our environment. We honor the Lenape and other indigenous caretakers of these lands and waters, the elders who lived here before, the indigenous today, and the generations to come. Thank you. Can we have roll call, please? Ms. Perone Lambros? Here. Ms. Niedergang? Here. Mr. Cohen? Here. Ms. Sachs? Here. Ms. Fraga? Here. Mr. Newland? Here. Mayor Frieda? Here. You have quorum. Thank you. If you'd like to rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, first item on the agenda is a presentation by Palmer Square Management. Uh. Um, so this year, uh, we have a lot of our traditional events, but we've also taken a new spin on them. So um, if you were around last month, we saw that instead of doing our, um, our uh, ice carving event, we kind of combined it with our doing the piano event to make it something new, exciting, and different. As we're trying to reimagine everything we're doing. So um, the ice carving event took place from 12 to three while the shops were open. Um, and they actually carved dueling pianos or two pianos, two baby grand pianos out of ice. And at five o'clock around the time the stops were closing on a Sunday, they put on a concert on the ice, which was really awesome. A lot of fun. The ice was lit up. Um, they thought we were crazy when we asked them, but they all, they all signed up for it. And it was so uh, well received that we hope to do it again at the tree lighting. So that should be a lot of fun, make a little, a little more magic. So. Um, one of the things we've done all year round is to look at our demographics, um, the people that are coming into the events, and try to make sure that all of our events hit all of our target audiences for the stores, for our role as a community partner, for you know each different type of vendor in town. Um, so we looked at everything we had, and again, we tried to reimagine it. So next month, uh, May, almost next month, May, we always did Girls' Night Out. After the pandemic, we found a way to kind of change this up because I'll tell you, our tenants were getting a little tired of everybody coming in just for the free food, just for the free drink, and it was kind of hard to uh, manage. So the pandemic gave us an excuse to make it a weekly event, a little smaller. So we tried Ladies' Night Out, still weren't getting our repeat audience. We were getting people that just came for the free stuff. This year we decided instead of giving them promotions and freebies that we would do shopping for a cause. So every Thursday night in May, we're gonna have a different benefactor. Um, we went to the traditional female benefits because, female and families I should say, because it was originally ladies night out or girls night out. Um, but again, that's difficult this year. So our four benefactors are gonna be um, we have Women's Space, Homefront, Community Options, and the YWCA. Um, each week they'll have their one week, and instead of all of our shoppers getting a discount back, they'll get a way to give back. So the stores will offer uh, lace silhouettes, for example, every bra fit, they give a dollar back to the cause. Um, some of the restaurants will donate back. If you order a meal, they'll donate so much else back. Um, we have enlisted our stylist who has gotten very good at working with the tenants to help us go around and make sure everybody participates so we have more giving. 
Plus, each week we're going to work with Dress for Success. So they'll have a spot where they can take donations, um, and they'll be there every week. Uh, in addition, we're going to have a kickoff event. So the kickoff event is going to be on May 5th and we want to do a derby themed event, um, something we've never done before. Get your hats out, get your dresses on, come out for a great time. Um, but we're actually going to do a live horse race. Now it's a wooden horse race. It's a charity horse. Every benefactor will get a horse ahead of time. They get the whole month of April to decorate it, name it, tell all of their donor lists to come out and support them on May 5th, um, where we'll have big dice and we roll the dice, and I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise ship, but when I was little, we had, uh, I think my family bought the Italian stallion, and we rolled the dice, and for every time their number comes up, the horse moves. Everybody's a winner, though, because they're all just collecting donations. It's a give back event. We'll have music, we'll have themed drinks, photo ops. Um, we're going to, you know, decorate it gorgeous with the red roses. Uh, and we're also thinking of inviting Save that day and doing a pet adoption because everybody loves the dog. So you'll have your four main benefactors, Dress for Success, and Save will have the six horses. Um, so that's our first big event of the year that's a little different than before. Um, as always, we have spring music starting. We did decide to hold off on the earlier music. Last year we attempted to have music every weekend throughout the year. <clears throat> The grass is a little muddy, it's a little cold, so we're gonna start that off in May with the music on the Saturdays. We'll go through the summer like normal. But last year what we did was we tracked all of the bands and what kind of clientele they brought in, what demographic they brought in, was it our demographic, are we hitting all the different audiences? So this year we can really mix it up and make sure we have a really good uh, mix of every different demographic throughout the year. So we'll have the music every Saturday. Uh, we are bringing back the dueling pianos in the summer. Everybody seems to love that. Um, for the record, we were the first people to have dueling pianos in this area. Now everybody has them. We brought them here in 2018. Now they're everywhere, but people still come back to uh, Palmer Square and Princeton to see the dueling pianos. Uh, we, we liked the first Friday events that we did last year. It's not a huge event, but it does bring the ambiance, um, and it gives every Friday we bring the arts out. We work with the Arts Council, uh, different artists in town to come out and do different things. Jazz music just livens it up when the town's open late to keep things going. Uh, so we'll do the first Friday events again. We have our movie series. We, of course, haven't picked a date yet, or the movies. Uh, any suggestions are always welcome, because you guys usually give us something good to put on the calendar. Uh, we do have the Music Fest series coming back in the fall. Uh, our Music Fest series, year over year, we've been using that demographic tracker, and we've been hitting the right bands to bring in the right people. Um, we found that Foot traffic is higher now than it had ever been on Sundays um, through that month versus pre-pandemic numbers um, with smaller bands and smaller events than when we used to do the jazz fees too. So, um, and then of course we're into holiday season. Holiday, we've got the skating rink coming back. We loved the trolley tours last year, so we'll keep them going. They go all through town, but we sponsored them. Um, we have, you know, we work with the university, so the university has their uh, holiday jam outside. Uh, our tree lighting, every year we try to make it just a little more magical. This year we're going to add the, the pianos, maybe go back to something a little more traditional, but, you know, you know, never know what you're going to get that day. So we like to make it snow and everything else. Um, and I'm sure there'll be many more that pop up throughout the time. We, we work with all community partners. Uh, we just picked a date for the Discover India event. Um, we have a ton of them calling us. Winbury, as I know, is celebrating their 40th anniversary, so they're looking to put an event on the calendar. Um, so we're, we're constantly working with the community partners. We have an eclipse viewing on the 8th. Um, they're coming out, so hopefully it's not like it was in, what was it, 2017, where we were mobbed and we needed police escorts for the, the glasses, but um, so we, we continue to work with community partners. It's a great way to keep everything going and uh, busy and lively. Right now we have the bunny strolling around, um, so that's been exciting 
it, although it was pouring on Saturday, but we made it. We made it work. Um, and that's really that's really it. We're we're constantly trying to come up with new ideas, and I know uh, you usually send us some different ideas. Um, events come through. I know you've had the races come through, and you have welcoming week. So we hope to work with all of them as they come in. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments? Yes, Eve. Hi, thanks. It looks like a really exciting menu of options all throughout the year. So thank you for all you do. Um, last year, the uh, Pride uh, picnic or after was uh, in Palmer Square, which was great. And I know it's yep. moving this year. But I'm wondering if you're planning on doing anything in June to celebrate Pride or encouraging you know, stores to fly a, a flag. We would definitely um, still work with them. We had a great time. I actually d was disappointed that they moved the picnic. Um, I know they moved it for logistical reasons and they want to move it every year. But we'll still send around the sign up, Genius, and different things to our tenants to make sure they're aware of what's going on on Heinz Plaza and we can uh, participate as well. Yep. Other. Michelle. I love the Derby event. That's a great, great idea. It sounds really, I'm excited. really fun. I mean, you, you guys are really creative. I, you're particularly very creative, and the ideas you bring um, really enhance everything going on downtown and activate the, the, whole, the whole area. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Leighton. Yep. Yeah, I just want to thank you, Mayor. Also, you know, I noticed all the activities that you're having, so... If we're gonna have a, uh, a plug for Pride, I would also like to have a plug for Juneteenth, which is a significant event in America and African-American history. And hopefully we'll pay a little attention to that too. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Yeah, oh, sorry, Michelle has. One other comment. I just wanna uh, let everyone know that um, we are forming a steering committee for the 250th. Uh, and um, Jamie uh, is representing uh, Experience Princeton in the downtown for that, uh, so a thank you. It's exciting. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, good night. Take care. Okay, next up are announcements and reports. Any council announcements or reports? I do have announcements, but I think I'm having the same problem you do. My iPad is just continually reloading, so when we get to the point where we're gonna be <laughs> voting on things, it's gonna be a little, Challenging. I don't know if uh, Terrence is still here. If there's anything that can be, David, you're able to. Yeah, I don't. It just keeps reloading Mine continually. Looks fine. Yeah. yeah I, no. Mine's not a Mac. My, so. my the count the packet just keeps reloading right. every few Sorry, seconds. We, we all have iPads up here that we're looking Sorry, at. It has yeah. the detail of the agenda, and a number of the iPads keep crashing. Yeah. So anyway, sorry. Just so you know what we're talking about. <laughs> I don't know if there's a anything that can be done at he, this uh, point. Or Terrence just, was looking at this just a little bit ago. Hard copy? Yeah, I mean, we do well, have the- That's for- Without, that the, have any without details, the details, but yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, I do have a couple of announcements no, no, should, since I'm talking anyway. <laughs> um, so uh, first, a couple of things uh, relating to the library. Um, I think I've mentioned this in years past. Um, on Tuesday, April 16th at seven, the uh, Teen Advisory Board at the library has an event called I Read This Book, in which all of them, and there's probably 15 to 20, talk about a book that they've read uh, during the year. And I sit there busily like writing down every title that they've seen, but I really um, encourage some or all of you to join me. It's really, uh, as a book lover myself, to see this kind of enthusiasm from the teens is really wonderful, and a lot of their recommendations have been spot on. So um, uh, both uh, council members and members of the public and uh, then also wanted to say that uh, Wednesday, April 24th, marks uh, 20 years of the Sands Library building. Uh, many of us remember the uh, debate about that building and where it was going to be cited, but it's, it's clearly in the right place. Um, so there'll be events uh, at the library from exhibits to conversations with the uh, li a series of library directors and uh, the architect of the building on the uh, afternoon of Wednesday, April 24th. So I encourage uh, my colleagues and others to uh, join me. And the other 
a point I wanted to make is just as uh, residents are required to use only the regulation garbage cans for disposing of their trash, the same rule applies for recycling. Mercer County has recently introduced a requirement that recycling only be in the official Mercer County containers. Um, there have been a number of injuries from people picking up uh, buckets, uh, staff uh, in Mercer County Improvement that picks up our recycling, and they're trying to reduce that. So it's for a good cause. You can pick up uh, a new recycling bucket, an official Mercer County recycling bucket at the Harrison Street Public Works. I think it is, Deanna, you can correct me, 9 to 2.30. Uh, Monday through Friday, is that? Yes, I, okay. I know 2.30 is the end and a 9 it, I think is the start. Yeah, and uh, my husband just did that. It took him just a couple of minutes, so not uh, an onerous ask. And that's it, thanks. Okay, David? I, I just wanted to ask a question about the recycling buckets because I feel like the new ones are bigger and I'm curious how that's supposed to reduce injuries I noticed that too, and I don't, I don't have an answer to that, but I know I've been both uh, internally and from Mercer County, I've been getting communications about how they want us to use. I mean, this is not an extremely much larger bucket, so I imagine some people are, have you know, significantly larger buckets, with, especially with, with newsprint, uh, you know, can be extraordinarily heavy. Right. So, but I, I did notice they were bigger. So. Yeah. And, of course, people can still use their old official buckets, too. Any other? Go. Leticia. Yes. So I know most of you probably already saw in our municipal newsletter, on social media, and town topics about our uh, March 16th community building event. But I just have to... Uh, mentioned that it was such a joyful event. Uh, I, I think by far is one of our most successful ones. I understand we had close to 170 participants attend, that they actually, uh, there was, uh, ex, what is the word, over, we had over capacity, so they had to stand, some had to stand in line outside waiting for folks to leave so they could come in. Wow. Uh, and my colleagues, Leighton Newland and Michelle, were there as celebrity callers and help, to help with the event. But I could say that everyone would agree that the stars of the event were our police squad, who took a very active role. And it was just, they stayed there through the entire event. And uh, I think hopefully they had fun as well. But uh, it was, and Chief Bucari was there also, who was there to, uh, to uh, help with, uh, with announcing the grand prize winners. But it was really, uh, it, it was hopefully you have fun too, but it was really a joyful event and it's wonderful to see uh, so many in our community come together for a fun, fun day. It was, it was a great day, and again, Chief, the, uh, the, the, the hit of the day were the police officers who went above and beyond to make this one hell of an occasion. I mean, they were mixing with the audience, they were handing out prizes, they were doing a tag team with the Spanish pronunciation and the English pronunciation. It, 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 it was amazing how much they brought to the occasion and how much they gave to themselves. So hats off to our fine police officers. Yeah. And one more thank you, and that's to Leticia, my colleague. You really did an outstanding job. You are the master game master. So thank you for, for oh, thank all you. It's, you it's something it's I enjoy. Really, so it, was, it brings it me obvious. joy, too. Good thank job, you. Leticia. Thanks. That's it. Thank you. Other council reports or announcements? Uh, just one quick thing. Uh, we have launched the campaign Bloom Local. 
Uh, so just look for more information in the newsletter, uh, how residents and businesses and the whole community can really get involved. We're working with various partners. I won't list out everything, but there's a lot of information on the website. Um, so thank you to my colleagues. Thank you to uh, Craig Dinwoody uh, and to ex uh, our communications director and Experience Princeton. Thanks. Thanks, Michelle. Okay. Deanna? Thank you, Mayor. Just a few updates. Uh, first, we've received word from New Jersey Department of Transportation that Washington Road, the 10-ton weight limit has been lifted. They are still maintaining a 25-mile-an-hour speed limit on the roadway between Route 1 and Faculty Road, um, and they're looking to finish the DNR Canal Bridge deck um, in spring or early summer. But for now, university buses, our fire department, uh, emergency services can all now cross that bridge without that, that weight limit restriction. Um, also this week, we have uh, a closure that will be occurring on Witherspoon Street between Valley Road and Guillo Avenue, right out here outside of our building. Um, this is on Wednesday, March 27th, between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. And this is to facilitate uh, some gas main work by PSENG, as well as tree removal for our Witherspoon Phase 3 project. Um, and then just to give advance warning and notice to everybody, beginning on April 8th, Witherspoon Street between Paul Robeson and Lee Avenue will be closed, and that will be a full closure 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, up to April 26. So that could be an 18-day span, and that is to um, construct the three raised crosswalks and to mill and pave the roadway. So with that closure, the idea is Witherspoon Street Phase Two construction will be substantially complete. It is a long period of a closure. Um, we're trying to get the word out early and often so everybody knows that we're working with the businesses along that corridor to um, get information to their customers about the detour routes because there still will be access to the businesses. They'll just have to come in nice. using John Street. So we are working through all of those details and um, intend to go out to all of the businesses individually and, and give them an update on this. So just want to make sure that the public is aware that this is happening. And that's it. Thank you. That'll, that'll be greeted with a lot of cheers. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have any other staff announcements before we get to the police report? No. Chief? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, tonight I have for you the February police report, uh, which was highlighted by Walter Harris Day, where we honor the service and sacrifice made by Officer Harris back in 1946. Uh, I want to thank the municipal partners uh, and different departments for their attendance. Um, I know in speaking to the family, it was much appreciated, uh, and it's a day that they look forward to, and I, th I thought we did a great job. Um, at the last uh, report that I gave, um, there was a request for the uh, 2019 statistics, which uh, have been added and are, and are included in uh, the February report. Um, and in looking at the report, I think that the uh, trend is that our calls for service are rising. Uh, so we're happy to add that, uh, that data and I, and I, I definitely think it's beneficial. Uh, and the last thing I want to mention by way of update is that our civilian police academy uh, for 2024 will begin April 18th. Um, and we had a total of 28 people uh, register for the uh, civilian academy. And uh, unfortunately, we were only able to take 20 uh, so we had to turn away uh, eight people uh, until the following year. Um, but I think that uh, the number of applicants is a testament to the job uh, that the men and women did, and it shows uh, that the uh, academy was successful, and uh, we look forward to building upon uh, its success this year. Happy to answer any questions. 
Thanks, Chief. Any council questions on the police report? For Eve? Uh, hi, thanks, Chief, and um, thanks for uh, Walter Harris Day. It was a, a very moving event. Uh, I've only been once before, but very, you know, really well done and very moving. So thank you for encouraging everyone to, to come and, and be part of that. Um, I have a question that I think I know the answer to, but I'm going to try anyway. I noticed that for the Safe Neighborhood Bureau, it said that they had helped at one uh, school crossing, and I was wondering if by some chance that meant that our dearth of crossing guards had somehow been magically solved, or that we are, because I know for many, many years we've been trying to find additional people, and maybe that just means that other members of the police department did that, but just an update on that would be interesting, thanks. Certainly, so uh, I think that the, um, you know, the. The fact that we're doing less crossings is a product of, uh, you know, some success that we had in recruiting some extra guards, uh, but it's certainly um, the product of the fact that we revamped um, and took a, a, a deep look at the school crossings uh, in, in general, and were uh, able to eliminate some of the ones that were, uh, you know, where there was redundancy. Um, so by eliminating some of the some of the crossings. And uh, through some pretty uh, solid recruitment, um, I think we're, we're covering less crossings, which allows us uh, to spend more time in and around the schools during that time, which, uh, so it's been a win-win. That's absolutely fabulous news. <laughs> Every once in a while I jump to the right conclusion about something, but thank you, that's a great update. Any other questions on the monthly report? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go, next we'll go to comments from the public for items not on the agenda. So again, this is for items not on the agenda. C please come on up, if you would just state your name, sure. your address, and then if our technology works right, a three minute timer should show up somewhere. But please, um, welcome. Hello, uh, my name is Julie Hagan. Uh, I live at 88 Battle Road. Um, I am a resident at 88 Battle Road for 16 years now, and mm -hmm. I am a member of the Nassau Swim Club during that whole time. I have to say that I'm very disheartened to hear the news that Princeton University has terminated the lease of the Nassau Swim Club. Nassau Swim Club is a precious resource for a truly diverse community for over 60 years. There are Princeton families who have enjoyed summers at the beautiful pool in the woods for multiple generations. It supports families, health, and well-being, community, all in one idyllic place. It is one of the few places I know in Princeton where town residents can gather for exercise, recreation, and community with members of the university and the Institute for Advanced Study communities. Beyond all this, the Nassau Swim Club offers swimming lessons, swim teams for children all over Princeton, increasing their well-being, health, and safety. The university may not want to be in the pool business, but it should be in the business of extending its resources for the benefit of the town and neighboring institutions. The Nassau Swim Club is an essential part of the university's value and goodwill toward the wider community in the town of Princeton. It, its value to the town's diverse communities is greater than the cost of supporting a fully volunteer organization that is working so hard to hold up its part of the bargain. I am asking you, town council and the mayor, to tell the university to accept the business plan that was presented and well received by the university, by the swim club, to keep us open. And I wanna just thank you, thank you, mayor for your support, um, that's it, thank you. Thank you. I, I would just mention that we, we can't tell the university that, but we can, we can suggest, and I, as you know, I have talked to some people at the university, but anyway, not to it, get into that. Mayor, is there a copy of the business plan? I'm sorry? Is there a copy oh, of no. the business plan available? No. Okay, yeah, yeah, they'll provide that. Okay, do we have other, anyone else in the room that wants to 
uh, make a public comment for an item not on the agenda. All right. Nobody else in the room? Is there anybody on Zoom that wanted to make a comment for an item not on the agenda? If so, if you would raise your virtual hand, that'd be great. All right, see no hands up and no one else in the room. We'll close that part of the meeting. And now we have four sets of minutes to approve, January 22nd, January 23rd, January 30th, and February 12th, if someone would like to move those. Thank you, Mia's got the motion, Leticia's got the second, so we're moving all four sets of minutes in block. Any questions or comments on those four sets of minutes? David was first, and we'll work our way right on down. All three of you had your hands up. Yeah, I'll just, I'm, I was absent for the first meeting, so I will abstain from that one, but vote on the others. Okay, so David's abstaining from the January 22nd meeting? Correct. Yeah. I had a couple of very minor comments that were in, like one was a comma that should be taken out and the other was an and that should be an in that I had in an email to you, Raina, that I realized just now I didn't send. So if it's okay to, uh, this is for the January 22nd meeting to uh, pass those minutes with the very tiny uh, changes that I would appreciate that. Okay. Uh, Michelle, did you have your hand up too? No, sorry. Okay. I couldn't tell it was all two of you, all three of you. Any other comments on the minutes? All right. Seeing none, uh, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And we note David's abstention for the January 22nd minutes. Next up, we have ordinance introductions. And just so people understand, when we do an introduction, we don't discuss the ordinance because we talk about when the public hearing would be. And if we started discussing it, that would negate the public hearing being at a later date. So we just say what they are and introduce these. First up is Ordinance 2024-14, bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements in and by Princeton in the county of Mercer, New Jersey, appropriating $16,117,500, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $15,311,625 bonds or notes of Princeton to finance part of the cost thereof the public hearing will be April 8th, 2024. Is there a motion on that? Thank you, David. Mia's got the second, and that is a roll call vote. Ms. Brown? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Niedergang? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Sachs? Yes. Ms. Fraga? Yes. Mr. Newland? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Ordinance 2024-15, bond ordinance providing for various improvements to the parking utility in and by Princeton in the county of Mercer, New Jersey, appropriating $511,000 therefore, and authorizing the issuance, issuance of $511,000 bonds or notes or print of Princeton to finance part of the cost thereof, the public hearing April 8th, 2024. Thank you, Michelle. Is there a second? Thank you, Eve. Roll call vote. Ms. Perron Lambros? Yes. Ms. Niedergang? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Sachs? Yes. Ms. Fraga? Yes. Mr. Newland? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Ordinance 2024-16, bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements for open space purposes in and by Princeton in the county of Mercer, New Jersey, appropriating $540,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $513,000 bonds or notes of Princeton to finance part of the cost, therefore, Public hearing April 8th, 2024. Thank you, Eve. Mia's got the second. Roll call vote. Ms. Perron Lambros? Yes. Ms. Niedergang? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Sachs? Yes. Ms. Fraga? Yes. Mr. Newland? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Ordinance 2024 17, bond ordinance providing for various sewer improvements in and by Princeton in the county of Mercer, New Jersey, appropriating $13,550,000, therefore and authorizing the issuance of $13,550,000 bonds or notes of Princeton to finance part of the cost, therefore, public hearing April 8th, 2024. Eve has got the motion, Leighton has got the second. Roll call vote. Ms. Perron Lambros? Yes. Ms. Niedergang? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Sachs? Yes. Ms. Fraga? Yes. Mr. Newland? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Ordinance 2024-18. Ordinance appropriating $121,000 from the Sewer Trust Fund to provide for miscellaneous facility repairs and improvements in and by Princeton in the County of Mercer, New Jersey. Public hearing April 8th, 2024. Another roll call vote. 
Oh, I'm, oh, sorry. Yeah, we've got to make a motion, that little thing. <laughs> Layton's got the motion. Mia's got the second. Sorry. <laughs> now we can do the vote. <laughs> Ms. Perron Lambros? Yes. Ms. Niedergang? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Sachs? Yes. Ms. Fraga? Yes. Mr. Newland? Yes. Carried. Okay, let's see if I get the last one right. Ordinance 2024-19, bond ordinance providing for the acquisition of open space in and by Princeton in the County of Mercer, New Jersey, appropriating $9,100,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $9,100,000 bonds or notes of Princeton to finance part of the cost thereof. Public hearing April 8th, 2024. Mia's got the motion, Eve has got the second. Roll call vote. Ms. Perone Lambros? Yes. Ms. Niedergang? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Sachs? Yes. Ms. Fraga? Yes. Mr. Newland? Yes. Carried. Thank you. All right, now we move on to resolutions. 24101, resolution of the Mayor and Council of Princeton authorizing change order number one to the contract with Eastern Surplus and Equipment Company for the purchase of one high water rescue truck for an increase of $8,600, resulting in a new contract total of $266,373 and new contract completion date of November 1st, 2024. Michelle's got the motion, Leticia's got the second. Questions or comments? All right, seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. 24102, resolution of the Mayor and Council of Princeton authorizing the award of a contract to Tactical Public Safety for Dispatch Consoles for $57,840, utilizing New Jersey State Contract number 83932, T0109, Radio Communication Equipment and Accessories. Michelle has the motion, Leticia has the second. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 24103, resolution of the Mayor and Council authorizing the award of a bid contract to Sunset Creations, Inc. for the 2024 spring tree planting in the not to exceed amount of $44,670. Michelle's got the motion, Eve's got the second. Questions or comments? Layton. Yes, Layton. Yeah, if, if you would, I just have a quick comment on this. Let me get it out so I get it right. I uh, talked with Taylor Zapuder, municipal arborist today, and want to let folks know that there is an additional municipal allocation this year for tree coverage. Tree coverage, if you or your neighbors, or if you know someone who would like a tree in front of their home, please ask them to reach out to T. Zapudor, T-S-A-P-U-D-A-R, at PrincetonNJ.gov. Taylor will be happy to talk to you about it. Remember, the tree must be in the municipal right away adjacent to your property. He will be able to help you with size, type species, and location. If you don't have a nice tree in front of your home, I strongly suggest you consider one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. 24104, resolution of the Mayor and Council of Princeton authorizing an increase of $40,558.14 to the professional services agreement with TM Associates for Witherspoon Street Phase 3 design service services for a new not to exceed contract amount of $425,436.14. Michelle has the motion, Eve has the second. Questions or comments? All right, I'm sorry, Eve. I, I just wanna thank uh, Deanna and her team for when these change orders come up to have such a clear, clear explanation of what happened, you know, that we opened up the, uh, the ground and we discovered things that we didn't know were there and so that required a contract to be revised. I just really always appreciate the explanation, so thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 24105, resolution of the Mayor and Council of Princeton to establish a dedicated trust by rider led inspections trust pursuant to NJSA 40A 4-39. Leticia has the motion. Layton has the second. Questions or comments? All right, seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Next up is the consent agenda. Is just, okay, Michelle's moving the consent agenda. Just, uh, are you asking for? I, I'd actually like to move it, but I'd like to ask for two items to be uh, removed and voted on separately. 
Okay, so why don't we, let's do the removal and okay. we'll, we'll, add, we'll address those two items and then get back to the consent agenda. Thank you. Okay, so the two items would be the last two, 24-111 and 24-112. Okay, so we'll do 24-111 first, resolution of the mayor and council of Princeton, amending the establishment of the ad hoc public art program study committee. Okay. So is there a motion on that? Michelle's got the motion. Is there a second? David's got the second. Michelle, did you have a comment? Uh, yeah, so the comment is I just, um, we made one amendment to the resolution so that it is broader than um, residents of Princeton's Princeton community, so it could be including residents outside, and this would just be a, applied to this particular ad hoc committee um, because we wanted some professional experience, um, so we've reached out to a particular person to appoint. Okay, other so any questions? Uh, yeah, just I think that the term for the future, the term Princeton community is maybe not as clear as it could be because I saw that there was a change, but to me Princeton community would mean someone who lives in Princeton, so I was a little confused, so maybe okay. we need better language going forward, but thank you for the explanation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on that? Okay, if not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, 24112, resolution of the Mayor and Council of the Municipality of Princeton authorizing appointments to boards, commissions, and committees, ad hoc public art program study committee. Is there a motion on that? Thank you, Michelle. Is there a second? Thank you, Layton. Questions or comments? Michelle. So just to um, refresh everyone's uh, memory, so this will be just a temporary ad hoc committee. We have 12 months. We're a couple months into the 12 months. Uh, this committee will only be five people appointed, plus uh, James Stewart from the Art Museum and Adam Welch from the Art Council, uh, to come up with recommendations for an uh, art plan for the community for public art, uh, and so that should be forthcoming. Uh, this is not the standing committee, and hopefully if we do move forward, that would be a larger group. And I just want to thank everyone, all the committee members, and everyone who applied. Um, it was really a great um, response, so thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Mia? <clears throat> How are we distinguishing this from a task force? <laughs> we don't use the word anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a task force that's not titled a task force. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? <laughs> Okay, seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that would leave the first five items under consent agenda remaining in the consent agenda. And Eve, you're moving that as a, thank you. Is there a second to the consent agenda? Thank you, David. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, David, do you have a motion? Yes, I move we adjourn. Thank you, is there a second? Thank you, Leighton. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you for everyone that attended. The meeting is over and have a great evening. Go out and buy lottery tickets. I hear a rumor that Mega Millions and Power